It's called In A Special Place because that's where I was when I recorded these demos. I, I was Songs were just coming out of my ears. It was a very great creative time, very powerful creative time. I was in a special place. It's also the second line of the song, Don't Bang the Drum, Here We Are, In A Special Place. These songs would have been written in 1984 and early 1985, in between tours and at home. At my, I had a little flat on St Mark's Road, just off Ladbroke Grove in Notting Hill. And I used to lie on the floor there with my huge big black book uh, and scribe the songs into it. And they, it was tough writing them as well. They didn't come easy. It was blood from a stone. I, I fought for every one of those songs. I had been working using Basil and Bond notepads. You know those little flimsy notepads, the pages all fall out and they're too small. And I, I was writing long songs and I, I had a lot of verses. For the song This Is The Sea, for example, I had about 20 verses and that wouldn't fit on the page of a Basil and Bond. So I needed something bigger. And I was in New York on a brief trip. I think it was the beginning of 1985. And I, I went into, I found a very strange shop on a side street. It was a witchcraft shop. And I was very intrigued. I went in and I had a look. And they had these huge blank books. What's that? I said to the guy. And the chap said, that's a book of shadows. What's a book of shadows? It's a book that witches write their spells into. So I thought, well, but this is what I need. And a song is just another kind of spell anyway. And they were, it was beautifully bound black book, but, but this size, with thick white paper inside, all blank. So a bit like an artist's sketchbook, but very beautifully, very luxuriously made, made to last. I suppose if you're a witch, your spells are for life. And, and I bought one of these and I immediately started writing my songs into it. And of course the pages were big enough to take all my myriad of verses, all my choices were laid before me. So I could work without constantly having to put loads of bits of paper on the floor. And, and a, a magical thing happened. I found that once I had all, all my songs in one book, one place, one store, it became a kind of mother load of magic for me. Just opening the cover of the book would bring me into my songwriting mood. It was a really wonderful thing. You know, previously I'd just been loads of little notepads and bits of papers all scattered. Suddenly all my work was concentrated in one form. And that, in, that educated me and it, it tightened my work up. We've actually got the black book here. Uh, it's, it's here at EMI Records being scanned for the record sleeve and a kind gentleman's just brought it to me. And you'll see a uh, big, Pages. You see, I can get all the variations of the song on, on one spread, never have to turn the page. There's enough space for me to write almost infinitely in my tiny hieroglyphic handwriting. First version of Old England, with lots of little notes to myself and a list of rhymes. Let's see, what's the rhyme for? Rhymes for strong. It must be for Stixie's flag where it ill belongs. And we've got strong song, belong, wrong, along, gong, and from London to Hong Kong, which fortunately I didn't use. This is the C, early version. Lots of variations of the, the lyrics again. Yeah, this is where, where it all happened. Everything was in here. And I just loved this book, still love it. 1985, one, it was the second one, second volume, because I filled this one. And at the back is the contents page. Because I could never find the songs, you know, I'd be looking for them. Where the hell is it? What? So I made myself a contents page. Very, I was like Roger the Dodger in the, in the, in the, in the Beano. Do you remember Roger the Dodger? And he had his dodge books up on the, up on the shelves. I was like Roger the Dodger with my songbooks. Yeah, lovely. Most of my life I've written songs on the guitar, but I've had piano phases. And This Is The Sea came out of a strong piano phase. That's why all these demos are piano vocal demos. I had a little CP70, which is a, a Yamaha electric piano in my flat. 
Uh, I wrote most of the songs on that and then got into the studio and, and tried them out in a real grand. That's the sound you hear in the record. It was done in Parkgate Studio. I don't think it's there anymore, but it was near Hastings. It was during the heyday of the residential studio. You know, you go down with a band, all, all take different rooms and spend your whole life recording. It has its, has, has its charms and it has its drawbacks. But for, for this, I went down with the producer before the band. Um, we recorded the demos, I think in, in one day maybe, maybe one or two days of just me sitting at the piano with my black book going page to page, choosing a different song and singing it. The producer was a chap called John Brand, who got me a wonderful vocal sound, a sort of instant divine sound that made me very comfortable singing. I don't think John had heard the songs. He might have heard maybe Old England, which I think we'd played live at a concert he was at, but I don't think he'd heard the others. And recording them all direct, from piano onto tape was a way of introducing him to the material and also of, of helping me sift through it because I had so many more songs than we needed for the record. I must have had 30, 35 songs. And John and I needed to sit and listen to them and make decisions about which ones we were gonna use. So doing the piano demos was a great way of doing that. And it also saved us See, I don't like doing demos with lots of instruments because what happens is I put all my best ideas in the demo and then when I come to make the real record, I've lost the freshness. The freshness is on the demo. And that happened a lot in the first couple of Waterboys records where, in fact, we used the demos as the record because the remakes had lost the, the charm. And I was determined not to let that happen and this is the sea. So I, I wasn't going to go in and do demos with loads of drum machines and guitars and overdubs. I was saving all that for the real record. So a piano vocal set of demos was a safe way of not, not using up the powder, if you know what I mean. The studio was deserted. There was me at a grand piano in the middle of this huge barn-like room and John Brand sitting on the other side of the glass in the control room and nobody else, I think. I don't think we even had an assistant engineer I always I was quite self-conscious as a as a performer in those days in a way that I, I wouldn't be now, and I, I didn't really want people I didn't know there, you know I didn't want some assistant engineer thinking oh God what's he thinking, you know I didn't want any of that I wanted to be in the same spirit of intensity that I would be in when I worked on my songs at home so we created the atmosphere in the studio like that. Old England was my response to Thatcherism. His clothes are a dirty shade of blue, conservative Tory blue. It's nothing much more than that. And the jingoism of the Falklands War, I think. He sticks his flag where it ill belongs. But the, the, the triumphalism of it rankled with me and, and I felt that the, the country, Britain, the whole of Britain really was in a bad way. Don't Bang the Drum was constructed differently from the other songs. Usually I wrote completely on my own. But I tried an experiment. I gave some lyrics to band members. I gave a couple to Anthony Thistlethwaite, our sax player, and I gave one, Don't Bind the Drum, to Carl Wallinger, our keyboard player. And Carl put music to it, and I really liked it. He did a kind of sassy, 60s-ish, boom, 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 kind of Detroit rhythm. And great melodies and good chords. And I really liked it, but I didn't like the groove and I reconfigured it according to my own lights, first as a, a slow ballad and then later as the, the, um, the full tilt rocker that it is on the finished record. And on the In A Special Place album, you hear it at its middle phase, me interpreting it as a slow ballad. I'm using Carl's melodies mostly and most of his chords, although I've put in some of my own as well, uh, and I've put in my own last verse musically. And it's very dramatic very um, intense and, and I've always loved that version. In fact, we've done it live a lot in the, the piano vocal configuration. When I made This Is The Sea, I was following instructions. The music told me what to do from somewhere inside. It wasn't as if I sat there and thought, well, I like this, I'm gonna do that. Oh, this is a nice one, I'll do that. It wasn't like that, it was instructions all the way. It was like I didn't have that much to do with it. I was getting instructions. That's the only way I can explain it. The music would tell me what to do. I would get a, an inner itch 
when I knew a song wasn't good enough and I could respond to that itch by the scrap in the song, which I did with quite a lot of them, and there are some on this, this album which didn't make the final cut, or I would, would scratch the itch by battling with the song until I got it so great that it had to go on the album, till it met the instruction and the instruction said, yes, put this on the album. Old England, it's got to be on. There's your instruction. And if I didn't get that instruction, it didn't go on the record. You know, I could have made This Is The Sea longer. I could have squashed more songs on. In those days with vinyl, you could do 40, 45, 50 minute albums. I think our Fisherman Blues album is 52 minutes. But as I say, I was following instructions and, and, I, and I stuck with them. And they, the sense I had clearly was to make it a short album and make every second count. And I like short albums. I think this is the C's 39 minutes. I like that. The CD era has allowed people to make albums that are 60, even 70 minutes long. And I've got to confess, I zone off after 45 or 50. I've bought albums like Red Hot Chili Peppers and things, and they're 72 minutes long. I've never got beyond minute 42. And I don't want that to happen when people listen to my records. Well, you'll hear on In a Special Place many of the well-known songs from This Is The Sea at early stages. The Pan Within, Be My Enemy, with verses that were scrapped later. It, it, you're hearing me trying out my ideas, singing the songs as I had them at that moment. But they all changed. The whole of the moon on, on this album has got lots of lyrics that were later scrapped, and it's missing some of the crucial parts. I think it's missing the too high, too far, too soon. I think that came later. So if you're a Waterboys fan or a Waterboys watcher, it's an interesting record because you hear songs at a, at a, at a stage that normally you wouldn't. <laughs> 